So today let's make a few more tests of this cheap Chinese multimeter, including a high voltage test, of course. It's the multimeter from my last video and it was for just three dollars including shipping and I already discovered that this multimeter actually works well and it's good for the price, but there are also some safety problems. For example, there is absolutely no fuse in this multimeter and so there is absolutely no overcurrent protection. And there is also no over voltage protection and the high voltage section of this one is quite dodgy. The voltage from the leads goes just into some tiny SMD resistors and it's rated up to 1000 volts DC and 750 volts AC, which is quite a lot for tiny SMD resistors. Let's take a look what actually handles the input voltage. Those tiny SMD resistors handle up to 1000 volts DC or 750 volts AC. And as you can see, there is absolutely no fuse in it. There is just an empty space for it. And in the last video, I was talking about the multimeter itself, but I completely forgot to talk about those cables, which are also quite dodgy. They come out very easily and they are not protected. This terminal is just completely exposed. It comes out very easily like this and if you stick it in a high voltage and this touches you, you get a shock. Let's take a look at other multimeters. This cable doesn't come out so easily and it's protected. The terminal is hidden inside of this plastic. And this one is the same. It's even longer here. It's not exposed. But this one is completely exposed and it barely stays in place. It comes out so easily. And also the probes are quite dodgy and the cable can very easily come out of here. And is it screwable? Okay, it's just pressed in. The pin is just in a tiny piece of plastic and the wire goes in it here. So the cable is basically just hanging on the copper. And it's quite a thin copper, I have to say. If you pull it, it's probably going to come out and as the cables are being twisted, you are actually twisting this piece of copper in it. So it's probably going to break after just few uses. But it says 1000 volts. And of course this thin wire has to handle 10 amps. So let's test it at 10 amps. It seems okay, but the cables are getting hot, of course. It's very, very hot now, quite soft and almost melting. It smells horribly and the rubber is almost liquid. Can you see the smoke? That's nice. And it's completely liquid. When I press it, it stays pressed and it sticks to itself. So that's 10 amps. So it's nicely molten and of course this one just comes out. The cables could be soldered back, but it's better to buy some better probes or a better multimeter, of course. You can also just twist it together and that's it. And it's fixed for my high voltage test, of course. Okay, so let's test it using a Veyriac and a microwave oven transformer. So let's add voltage, 200 volts, 300, 400, it should be able to handle up to 750 volts, so let's see, 600, 700, 750 and still okay, that's nice. It seems completely okay at 750 volts. So let's try a little bit more to see if there is enough headroom for safety. Let's try 825, which is 10% more. 
or 900, which is 20% more. And it's still okay at 20% over the range. So it definitely looks nice. Now let's try a DC voltage using a simple rectifier with a high voltage diode and capacitor from a microwave oven. So let's see what happens. 400, 600, 800, approaching 1000. That's okay. Now 10 extra percent. 20 extra percent and still okay at 1200 volts. So it seems nice. So here you can see the input section of the current meter with probably no protection in it and now let's see what happens if I just accidentally set it to current and try to measure voltage. Now it's set to 20 milliamps and the voltage is of course going to be mains. And this is a really bad idea, but let's try it. 3, 2, 1... Bloody hell! It exploded! So I went to reset all of my circuit breakers, of course, and the multimeter is completely dead. The only thing that works is the decimal point and this high voltage indicator, but otherwise it's completely gone. And there is a nice mark on the cover of it here. That's nice, and... Also, this resistor is exploded here. So here you can see the close-up of the exploded resistor here, and there is also some track on the board exploded here, and it's peeling. That's nice. But it also looks like it was arcing here. And here it's from the other side. It's exploded here, and... It's also exploded here at the sliding contacts. One of them is molten here. So as you could see, the overcurrent went through here. It damaged the switch, some tracks on the board, those two resistors and... some overvoltage also got into this chip and damaged it. So here you can see how much this is actually protected. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. There is not much to salvage but I will keep this battery with the battery clip. The board is completely useless, those cables are useless, but I will keep those screws because they can be useful. I have boxes for salvaged screws and if you have a lot of salvaged screws, you can always find the right ones you need, when you need them. I will also keep this elastomeric connector or conductive rubber because it can be useful for a restoration of old clocks and games. And maybe also some of those contacts can be good for some repairs. So that's it.